hello everyone welcome to a brand new video today we would be discussing on how to install Jenkins server using docker on our Windows laptops to start with I would be looking for the image that can be used for Jenkins so I would go to docker hub and I'll type Jenkins and uh, the first image that comes up is uh, Jenkins but then uh, we see that it is deprecated. So basically what I would be using is Jenkins slash Jenkins for the installation purpose. So I'll just search for Jenkins slash Jenkins and they should give me the latest uh, um, the official image of Jenkins which is being maintained. And if you see this has been updated a day ago. So we are looking at the latest releases. Now, if you are looking for more details on how to actually run Jenkins, you can always go to the documentation of any Docker image and get the information on how to do that. So here we get the basic uh, run command for Jenkins. So let's actually go ahead and run this. So we'll be doing it as Docker run hyphen D in a detached mode hyphen P. I would be giving the port number as 9090 on my laptop and i would be mapping it to 8080 which is the default jenkins port um on the installation and then i would also be mapping it to a docker volume uh, now because i am on windows i would not be using the file path for the docker volume so what I'll do is uh, instead of running it straight away, what, the first thing that we need to do is create a volume. So I'll say docker volume create Jenkins home. And then what we would be doing is running the docker container with hyphen D. I'll map it to port 9090 and map it to port number 8080 of the container. And I'll go with this and the volume that I would be using is this. and will map it to var jenkins underscore home now if you don't give a persistent volume for jenkins we would lose all the data that is actually saved on the container after the container has started so all the configuration that is run or created after the container starts and all the jobs that we create would be lost if you don't give a persistent volume in jenkins the next thing that we would be doing is um, making sure that the Jenkins server restarts so on failure and we would use this command as that stuff and at the very end I'll give the Jenkins image which is this and LTS so this is what I would be providing and if you would like to make sure you could always do a Jenkins Jenkins else you could also go to the tag and here you would get the LTS release. Now the Jenkins image just talks about Jenkins Jenkins. So I'll just remove the later part of the image and the tag and we are good to run this. Now as soon as I do this, so the Jenkins image would be pulled from the internet. If it is not existing on your server or your laptop, it would actually pull the image. In our case, it is pulling the Jenkins image. And as you know, Docker images are a layered architecture wherein each layer of the Jenkins image would be downloaded, extracted, and then combined to create a single Jenkins image. So all the layers are being pulled as of now. Once the layers are pulled, it would be combined into a latest one and you get Jenkins Jenkins latest. The next thing that we do is check if the container is running. Yes, the container is running for about eight seconds now, which is good. And this is the image ID that we have. So let's actually go into the browser and say, and let's actually go to local host on port number 9090, because this is the port on which we map our Jenkins server. So as you see the Jenkins is starting up so all the configuration files and everything that is needed for Jenkins to run is being set up while this is loading. So as soon as the 
boot up finishes for Jenkins, uh, you would be looking at a screen where it would be asking us for admin credentials or an administrative password to unlock the Jenkins installation. So we need to read the details from where Jenkins secret initial admin password. So what I would be doing is using the docker exec command exec. I'll give the container ID which is this and I'll do a cat for the Jenkins file. So what I'll be doing is copying the exact path and uh, we'll be pasting it and hit enter. So this should actually read the file where Jenkins underscore home secrets initial admin password and should give you the actual password. Now once we have the password, you could always click provide this and this should take you inside the Jenkins installation page. Now you could go with the default plugins or you could always select the plugins that you would like to install. I would strongly recommend you to go to the install suggested plugins tab and this should initiate the downloading of the plugins. So once the plugins are downloaded, which can take about a minute or two for the plugins to be downloaded and installed. Once everything is done, you would be looking at a configuration page wherein it would be asking you to set up your Jenkins user and its password and an email address. So let's wait for the plugins to be installed, which can take anywhere between a minute or two. And we are currently installing Jenkins version 2.440, which is the most latest version as of this installation. So as you see, we are almost all there. Um, the last plugin dark theme is being installed. And once this finishes, what we can do is uh, go to the configuration page where it would be asking us for a username. I'll provide admin as the username and uh, admin at cloudpartshala.in as the email. And uh, the URL that we would be using is localhost and uh, we should now be able to connect to Jenkins or start using Jenkins. So this is how the installation of Jenkins happens. Uh, you could act, create your own job. So let's create a test job one, go for a freestyle project, create, and uh, this should give you the configuration page where you can actually give a description called as demo job. And uh, probably could go for build, execute, and go for execute shell. Uh, you could run default Linux commands over here and if you would just like to see what all has been put inside the var Jenkins underscore home folder you could always do that and just apply and save and just click on build now and this should actually run the job on Jenkins and give you a detailed description of all the stuff. So these are all the files that were actually created when the Jenkins uh, Docker container started and this is the installation. So just to uh, make sure that uh, the data is not lost, let's actually remove the Docker container. So I'll do a Docker RM hyphen F and remove the Docker container itself. So we are now gone with the Docker container. What we would be doing is running a fresh container with the Docker run command. And uh, the idea of this is that we should not be losing the data or basically we should be able to log into Jenkins and should be able to view the console output of the test job and also be able to run new jobs. So let's actually see if I am able to do it ADMIN ADMIN and if I say sign in here we still see the test job and if I go inside the job and say build now, I should be able to build the job and get a similar output. So this is uh, how a basic installation of Jenkins works. It's very, very, very easy and quick and a very good place to start with if you are starting on your DevOps journey. 
this Jenkins can be used for building a lot of stuff. You could run your AWS CLI commands, you could run your Terraform codes, you could use it for building your packup builds and many more things on the same Jenkins server. We would be exploring all the options in the coming videos. Till then, I hope you like this video. Please like and share it across. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Keep having a great day.